Hi everyone, State Senator Caroline Menchiva here with the end of my first House of Origin deadline, which was the deadline to get all of our bills off the Senate floor. I wanted to make sure I updated you all on where our legislative packet is. Remember, we started with 16 bills back in February, February, and throughout our policy committee process, one of them was turned into a two-year bill. Now, of those 15 bills, appropriations turned another one into a two-year bill. So I was left with 14 bills that made it out of either one or two policy committees and appropriations. And I'm really proud of this number. Of the 14 bills, I got unanimous consent on three off the floor. Those were SB 223 to increase the workforce of mental health professionals serving our K through 12 schools while also ensuring they meet the training requirements. Two, SB 456, to make it easier for youth-focused organizations to obtain the grants they need to get homeless and at-risk young people housed. And three, SB 635, which aims to identify children with developmental delays or behavioral concerns as early as possible. Then, on the floor, I presented 11 for a vote and got the following bills off the Senate floor. SB 11 foresees you to maintain an appropriate therapist ratio and incentivize the mental health therapist workforce. SB 260, adding $20 benefit for menstrual products for CalWORKs recipients. SB 372, prohibit the dead names of professionals or names of those under the Safe Home Project that fall under the Department of Consumer Affairs to be listed. SB 373, prohibit the disclosure of mental health therapists' full address on their license. SB 457, allowing unaccompanied minors to consent to vision care. SB 499, calling all schools to create climate resilient plans now to address our extreme heat. SB 541, expanding access to condoms at public high schools along with HPV vaccine access at all our family pack providers. SB 600, increasing the minimum CalFresh benefit from $23 to $50 a month. SB 611, bringing transparency to rental units and eliminating junk fees that tenants get charged when living in a rental unit. SB 729, expand access to fertility care, which includes IVF coverage from large group health plans. And finally, SB 732, recognizing the pallet bat as the state bat of California. Now, these bills are in the assembly and have to go through the same process they did here in the Senate, which means policy committee, fiscal committee, and then a final assembly floor. And if any of these bills are amended in the assembly, they will have to come back to the Senate on concurrence, meaning I'll need to get another vote from my senators before they head to the governor's desk. As for my two-year bills I mentioned earlier, we have, hit, we have hit pause on them so that we can refine the bills and move forward with them in January 2024. We will then have to meet additional deadlines in the second year of the session to get them back to the governor's desk by September 14th. Additionally, as chair of Budget Subcommittee 3 on Health and Human Services, I engaged in meaningful budget conversations built from the oversight approach we took on earlier this year. Our state has been facing an overall social service crisis, whether it be our behavior and mental health crisis, our access or lack thereof to affordable health care, and our depleted workforce in these sectors. I was vocal about priorities centered on furthering investments for youth and families and ensuring California protected our critical health and human services programs, and I'm proud of the strides we were able to make. As we move forward in the legislative process, I want to assure you I will continue to fight for you, but I also need your help. So please reach out to your assembly members to express support for the bills which are now in their hands. Ensuring you have the programs and opportunities you need for healthy and happy lives now and for a prosperous future. See you out in the community. Bye.